Hello there, brothers and sisters in Christ. God bless each and every single one of you. It is Hunter's Point here with another video. I do hope and pray that each of you all watching are having a good Monday night so far, wherever you all are at. I do hope and pray that each of you are all doing well. You know, I wanted to come on here and give you all a news update on the topic of falling away, right? It's been a while since I've done a video in regards to the state of modern churches. Now, I found this article off of endtimeheadlines.org and thought it was very timely, very interesting to say the least. So this will serve as the content for your news update tonight. So without any further ado, this is your one article world news update for the 25th of March, 2024. The article again is off of endtimeheadlines.org and will be linked in the description box below as per the usual. Falling away, church attendance continues to decline in most U.S. religious groups. As Americans observe Ramadan and prepare to celebrate what you know, secular folks tend to refer to as Easter, right? many also refer to it as Resurrection Sunday, as well as Passover, the Jewish festival, the percentage of adults who report regularly attending religious services remains low. Three out of ten Americans say that they attend religious services every week, 21% or almost every week, 9%, while 11% reporting attending about once a month, and 56% seldom, 25%, or never, 31% attend. Among major U.S. religious groups, members of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, also widely known as the Mormon Church, are the most observant, with two-thirds attending church weekly or nearly weekly. Doesn't really matter too much because their doctrine is wrong. Protestants, including non-denominational Christians, rank second, with 44% attending services regularly, followed by Muslims, 38%, and Catholics, 33%. Majorities of Jewish, Orthodox, Buddhist, and Hindu Americans say they seldom or never attend religious services. 26% of Orthodox adults 22% of Jewish adults and 14% of Buddhist adults, as well as 13% of Hindu adults, attend their respective religious services regularly. Although Buddhists and Hindu adults have similar levels of regular attendance, Buddhist adults are much more likely to say that they seldom or never attend, 75%, than Hindu adults at 51%. The largest segment of Hindu Americans, 36%, say that they attend their religious services about once a month. Americans with no religious affiliation, including those who say that they are atheist or agnostic, are very unlikely to attend church, regardless of faith. Right? Again, these are people who either do not believe in the existence of a higher power, or they're not sure. Right? They tend to ask a lot of questions, but never actually put their faith in the one that they should be putting their faith in, and that's our Lord Jesus Christ. Major religious celebrations for people of the Christian, Jewish, Muslim, and Hindu faiths in March and April, which involve gatherings of the faithful at churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples, will likely draw many more adherents than in typical weeks. Gallup measures church attendance and religious affiliation on nearly every U.S. survey it conducts. These results are based on aggregated data from Gallup telephone surveys conducted in 2021, 2022, and 2023, which yield enough sample to examine attendance among a larger number of religious groups than would be possible in your typical survey samples. Beyond Protestants, Catholics, and those with no religious affiliation, other religious groups each represent 2% or less of the U.S. population. The combined 2021 through 2023 data comprise interviews with more than 32,000 U.S. adults and at least 200 respondents in each religion, except for Orthodox churches and Hinduism. Gallup also constructed similar aggregates using 2000 through 2003 and 2011 through 2013 data to assess changes in religious service attendance over time. Two decades ago, an average of 42% of U.S. adults attended religious services every week or nearly every week, 
A decade ago, that figure fell down to 38%. And now, it is currently down to 30%. This decline is largely driven by the increase in the percentage of Americans with no religious affiliation, 9% in 2000 through 2003 versus 21% in 2021 through 2023, almost all of whom do not attend services regularly. Still, most religious groups have also seen a decline in regular attendance at religious services over the past two decades. Again, look at the figure of those who have no religious affiliation in the United States. Right, it was 9% in 2000 to 2003. It is now 21% in 2021 through 2023. And again, that's not even factoring in the modern 2024 data. Right? If I'm using logic based off prior evidence, I would say that that number, 21%, has likely gone up again. I mean, you, you got to look at the amount of folks who do not even attend religious services. It's now at 30%. I mean, it's, it's incredible when you think about it. That's the amount of people who actually attend religious services. So that tells you that the amount of people who do not attend religious services every week or nearly every week would be 70%. 70% of U.S. adults. It's just incredible, man. It's sad, but that is the state of our world. And I am afraid, I mean, I'm not afraid, but... The Bible's clear that the worst is yet to come, really with everything that pertains to the end times and the state of our society within the end times. But that includes the great falling away. You think what we're seeing right now is crazy? I think the Bible's made it pretty clear that the worst is yet to come. So that is where I will conclude this news update for March 25th. I'm going to go ahead and pull up eSword which is my online digital Bible program. And we are going to go ahead and go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. This is the saving gospel message, right? This is how you were saved if you believe this alone in your heart. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye believed in vain. Here's the emphasized portion. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That is the gospel, the good news, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. You are saved and sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise unto the day of redemption, the nanosecond that you have placed your faith in this gospel message alone. Okay, you are not saved by your ability to do good works or good deeds, right, or follow commandments or obey Jewish ordinances. It's not about being water baptized. It's not about repenting of your sins. You want to talk about a worldly phrase, look no further than that. Right? I find that the vast majority of those who use that phrase do not actually understand what the word repent means. Right? Repent, to repent, is to change your mind. So biblical repentance, using that proper definition, is changing your mind from not believing in the saving gospel message alone to believing in the saving gospel message alone. If you are trusting in a combination of your faith and your works, you haven't trusted in Christ alone. And therefore, using the proper definition of repentance, you are to repent, to believe, to change your mind from unbelief to belief in Christ alone. That is the true biblical meaning of repentance. Not that phrase, repent of your sins. Those who use that try to say, oh, you need to confess and apologize for your sins. Your sins were paid for. Repentance is changing your mind. Those who try to tell you something differently, they don't know any better. I'm going to go ahead and read John chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, as I believe they tie in beautifully with the saving gospel message. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. It's really that simple, folks. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, God the Son, the second part of the Trinity. He died on the cross, shedding his precious purifying blood for the remission of all mankind's sins, that's past, present, and future sins. He was buried in the tomb three days, proving that he was dead, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, for our justification and therefore our salvation. Jesus did the work. All you have to do is believe in him. It really is that simple. I'm going to finish here by reading Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. It says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We know that grace, by definition, is getting what we don't deserve, which God has offered to us as the free gift of salvation. And we accept and receive that free gift once and for all, past, present, and future, by faith alone, in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ alone. Right? It's God's unmerited favor. We've done nothing to deserve God's amazing grace. And yet, he's loved us enough to offer that to us, that free gift of salvation, to show us grace. All we have to do is believe in that gospel. And that is the equivalent of us accepting that free gift and embracing the grace. It's really that simple. So I pray that if you're watching this video right now and you've stumbled across my channel page at any point in the past, I pray that you'd believe on Christ alone now while you have that chance. Because let me tell you, time is short. You have no idea when your earthly existence is going to come to an end. And once it's over, it's over. Then you begin your next life, your eternal life. Or, for those who have unfortunately made the decision to not believe, eternal torment is what awaits them. You don't want that. And God doesn't want that for you either. You know, he loved you enough to send his son to pay for your sins so that you didn't have to. Because as human beings, we would never be able to pay for our sins. That is why hell is eternal. See, but Jesus Christ offered up his blood to serve as the complete payment for all your sins so that you don't have to pay for any of your sins. Christ paid for them all. All you have to do is believe in him. That's the equivalent of accepting that payment that he's offered up for your sins. Please believe on Christ alone now while you still have that chance. I implore you to do so. All right, that is where I'm going to leave you all off at for this video. I will see you all in the, in the next video message whenever it is, should the Lord tarry is coming. Otherwise, God bless you all. All right, take care.